All right. So for, um, anyway, that's uh, that's that's the reason that people will say that. All right. Now the the third the the fourth and fifth um, reason. So I'm going to give you guys tips to help you learn the tools. Bottom line is you got to just learn the tools. You know, like you don't know them. Uh, it's going to be hard to tell a customer why they need to get it if you don't even know what that gets used for. Uh, then the fourth and fifth one are are easily. Um, when you're new, you'll hear them combined, and so you don't know how to differentiate, and you learn that later. I know I sure as heck didn't, because people would say them together, but they're two completely different objections. One is, it's too expensive, and one is, I can't afford it. It's too expensive is the number one thing that newbies will hear, um, because you are selling an expensive product, and it's just, you're not, it's new to you in terms of like the building the value, all right? And Jonathan, if you want to make calls, you can go into my office and make calls in there. Um, so know that it's a normal thing to hear but I'm gonna give you tips like cuz for me when I started off I only had like a hundred fifty dollar average order and my closing was like 50% it was really bad and after my first week or after advanced training my average order went to over four hundred fifty dollars and my closing went up to like eighty percent I ended up selling eighty six hundred dollars my first week for my fast start um, but I had a really slow start in the first weekend all right and the tips that I'm gonna give you today made a big impact so guys understand that it's too expensive it means I don't feel it's worth it, it doesn't mean they don't have the money so when you're telling them oh but I broke it down but it's like a dollar a day it doesn't matter if they feel it's not worth it they're not gonna spend the money if I told you I'm gonna sell you a water bottle for a hundred dollars but don't worry you just have to pay me a dollar a day for the next hundred days it's like you go buy a new water bottle every day you know like it's not it's too expensive like I wouldn't spend a hundred dollars on a water bottle all right unless you're like in the desert dying and it's the last one in the world um, and then there's uh, the I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I literally don't have the money for it. All right. So, for instance, if I'm selling you a Mercedes, a brand new Mercedes, beautiful, fully loaded, and I said I'm selling it, I'm leaving the country, and I'm selling it for ten grand, would anyone say that's too expensive? No. No, heck no. But what could you say? I can't afford it. You're like, I literally don't have the money right now. Um, but no one would say it's too expensive. Or if I was selling you my first car, which is a 1983 Caprice Classic, beat up junker, um, or the engine was shot, you know, it's two-tone because of the sun, uh, the air wasn't working properly, the windows, and I'm selling it, I said, I'm selling it for 10 grand. That's too expensive. You'd be nuts to spend that. It's not even worth $1,000, all right? So again, understanding that difference of it's too expensive and I can't afford it. But sometimes you'll say it together. Uh, and so guys, fifth is if they work full time, they can afford Kako. Everyone can afford Kako. Even if they don't work full time, they might still be able to afford it, but they shouldn't be spending money if they don't have money coming in. So if they just lost their job recently or whatever, fact is they should be holding their money um, to make sure they're paying the essential things that they need, like food and water and whatever bills, until money's coming in. So sometimes you'll run into someone like, unfortunately, if you, you know, saw, um, uh, you know, like a, a friend of our family and they just, uh, the husband just lost their job, you know, and if you see them, they're a Mac, they're married, average age, own a house, but the husband just lost his job and you wouldn't know that he just got let go last week. So, you know, that happened once in a blue where you bump into someone and you just didn't know and it is what it is. But if people work full time, if you ever hear I can't afford it, it's actually a smoke screen. It's a different excuse. They either weren't excited about it. All right. Uh, or they have other things going on that they didn't want to tell you about. All right. And so if they say, I'm like, hey, it doesn't sound like that's something that you're excited about. Most of the time, it's just they weren't that excited about it. So they're telling you, oh, no, I can't afford that. Of course they can. They work full time. They can afford 40, 50 bucks a week. They can afford 20, 30 bucks a week. To say, hey, obviously you're not excited about that. I'm like, let me show you some smaller stuff. You might see something you like. You know, Donovan last week had told me, he goes, hey, Kathy, I have a really hard issue. And he goes, I can't afford anything right now. He's like, they're like, no, no, I can't afford anything right now. And he's like, what do I do? And he's someone who's like uh, right at FSM. He's at $29,000 in his career. And I was like, Johnny, what I, what I learned and what I always did when I was new is if someone told me I can't afford anything right now, I knew that that was based on the information they had so far. And obviously, they weren't excited or they weren't comfortable with that because they could have afforded it. They have a house. You know, they work. And so I would always tell them automatically when they said I can't afford anything right now. I'm like, I'm like, well, hey, obviously that's just that set is probably something you're not excited about, or would it be boss for you right now? I'm like, did you really like Cutco? Like, yeah, I love it. You know, I just can't afford it right now. Uh, he's like, well, you know what? Let's just drop down and look at some of the smaller options because you might see something you really like. We have some really cool sets that are just like 70 or 80 bucks is all you'd put down. Let me show you those and just see if there's something you like. And you know, she's like, okay. And he texted me like um, later on. He he was on his way to a demo, and he texted me after. He's like, it worked he's like I sold a galley you know but he every time he was closing on the family sets he's like if someone doesn't buy a family set they always tell me like I can't afford anything right now uh, and so you'd have a hard time dropping down so again understand that it's based on the information they have so far 
and your response should be, hey, no problem. Uh, it seems like that's probably not the best thing for you right now. I'd rather drop down and find something that's more comfortable. Everyone got that? All right. So that's really important. So I'm going to give you some tips. We're going to write them in here. Everyone on page two in your manual. You guys want to be in your manual? Page two. All right. Page two in your manual. So you can write stuff in. So I'm going to give you just little awesome tips that we can put in from the beginning, all right, um, that you guys can plug in when you guys are meeting with customers, all right? So on page two, you got social etiquette. So we're going to go through each point. So what's your first point? What's your first objective when you're going into this page? What's your objective? Oh, okay. Connect okay. with the customer. Connect with the customer. Show them your goals. Let them know what you're up to. Make sure you guys are chit-chatting with them, you know, being personal. Um, so you go through there and you're sharing your contest with them. And guys, on the bottom, something I add, and, and if you want to sell a lot of Cutco, if you talk to the top FSMs, all right, they'll tell you uh, that the top person, all right, and hey, Randy, can you get his stuff for free money? Um, I really want to help him out. We didn't even touch his list last night, so just grab it. Um, but we had, yeah, we had 10. Um, you'll talk to the FSMs, and they'll tell you, hey, you want to hear um, you want to say that it's expensive or it costs more or whatever at least 10 times before you ever get to prices. Like, can they hear it like at least 10 times? And you'll hear different people. I know how to pause it. Like, you just want to say it a lot. You want to remember in training how positive you want to say it before they do and like saying it's expensive, it costs more. Well, I'm going to show you guys, um, you know, how to plug that in. Okay. So, right in the beginning, all the way in the bottom, after you wrap up social etiquette. So, you told them, hey, like I said on the phone, you don't have to get anything because I get paid just to show it. But if you do see something you like, Please don't hesitate to get it today because not only would you be getting great product, you'd be helping me out too. And so you go through that, right? On the bottom, like right underneath that, I want you guys just to add right there. But by the way, all right, this stuff is way too expensive. So just write it in there all the way on the bottom. By the way, this stuff is way too expensive for you to buy just to be nice. This stuff is way too expensive for you to buy just to be nice. But... You writing? Your pen. All right. So this stuff is way too expensive for you to buy just to be nice. But I want to let you know. But I want to let you know. Why? Whose phone is that? Is yours still there? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay sorry. For Val and Pat's. Um, uh, but I do want to let you know why so many people invest in Cutco. Why so many people invest in Cutco. All right. So you'll tell them that you're like, Hey, by the way, this stuff is way too expensive for you to buy just to be nice. Um, but I do want to let you know why so many people invest in Cutco. Everyone got that. And so now we're going to go into, uh, into the company. All right. So page three, it's right there. Plug it in. By the way, what you that'll, that'll evolve. You might hear some of the FSM say like, Hey, I'm assuming you didn't put away three grand waiting for the knife guy to come by. Uh, this stuff is way too expensive for you to buy just to be nice. But I do want to let you know why so many people invest in Cutco. Uh, and so before we get started, you know, while I set up, if you can grab your favorite serrated knife, your favorite steak knife, and so we dive into page three. Got it? Um, so that's the first plug. Everyone feel good? All right. Um, then you go in, you're telling them about the company. So you guys are going through with your customer, all right, and you've shared all your goals and stuff with them. <laughs> now you're going to tell them about this. So you're going to on page three, letting them know all the facts and everything. One thing I want you guys to add, you can just like make a little note here on the side or wherever you want, um, is it's not typed on here on the facts of the company, but it is in your blue book. It says a promise of satisfaction proven through our for unique um, uh, forever guarantee and world-class customer service. All right. So it does say that right here. So I just made a note that says forever guarantee. All right, and then just put cost more, all right, or obviously cost more. So you're going to make a price books, all right, and you're going to say, hey, um, all of our products, by the way, are guaranteed forever, um, so obviously it costs more. Let's go. All right, um, so obviously it costs more. So making sure, and that's where you can bring in, by the way, I'll plug right there if you want to make a note, Craftsman Tools or Snap-ons. So I'm like, hey, everything's guaranteed forever, like Snap-ons or Craftsman Tools. So obviously it's going to cost more. And they're like, oh, okay. I'm like, actually, let me show you a product that demonstrates the quality of Cutco. And now I'm going to do what? Cut the, Cut the penny. penny. All right? So you just you just plug that forever guarantee. 
let them know, hey, we have a forever guarantee, kind of like snap-ons and craftsman tools. So obviously it's not cheap. So just plugging that again. Hey, actually, let me show you practically. Tell me the so quality of cutco. Boom, you cut the penny. Who here had someone ask you, how much are those? Raise your hand if you had someone ask you that, the price of them, all right? If you have someone ask you, you guys uh, do not uh, downplay it. I remember being new and I was like, oh, it's not that much. You know, like, bull crap. It's the most expensive pair of scissors they're ever going to buy. Um, but they're also going to have them for 60 years and use them for everything. Um, so you'll never, ever have to, you know, buy scissors again. Uh, but you want to build up the quality. All right. By the way, if you're doing your demos in Spanish, you never want to say caro. Because caro is the bad connotation of expensive. You want to say costoso, meaning costly. So you're like, son costoso, son una inversión. Costoso. You want to say, no son barato, son costoso, son costoso. una inversión, uh, costoso. All right? Um, before you leave today, you guys can email to yourself the Spanish manual. We did that on Friday, but we can do it again. So... Uh, again, no son barato, you want to say that a lot, no son barato, son una inversión. No son barato, son costoso, son una inversión. But inversión is investment. So saying no son barato, son una inversión. Make sure you guys are saying that a lot. So on the scissors, boom, you cut the penny. Uh, they ask you how much it is. Your face should say how much it is. Like I remember being like, oh, it's not that much. No, no. You want to be like. Most expensive scissors you're going to find. Like you just, you just kind of nod your head and I'm like, I'm like, they're up there. I just, I just do that. I'm like. I'm like, I'm like, as you can see, it's super high quality. I'm like, so obviously it's going to cost more. And again, it has a guarantee. And they're like, oh, I'm like, we'll get to prices later. That's it. Uh, and they're just like, oh, okay. You know, and if you're like, well, how much? You know, be like, uh, and Andy, I love like listening to some of the top guys. But if someone keeps asking, well, how much? Well, how much? They'll be like, honestly, if I tell you the price right now, you're going to go into price shop. So I need to justify first. I need to let you know why it costs what it does before I tell you the price. And they're like, oh, my God, how much are these things? They're like, done. you might have to take out a second mortgage. All right, no, I'm just kidding. Just sell one of your kids. Uh, like, no, I'm just kidding. All right, but they're like, they'll have fun with the customers by making sure they understand. So on the scissors, guys, just make a little note that says high quality equals not cheap. So just make sure, again, like I don't care how you say it, but make a plug for the quality. So just put high quality, you know, equals not cheap. All right, so you're plugging the price. So we just told them in the beginning, you know, it costs more. Then we told them on the guarantee, hey, obviously this costs more. Then you cut the penny, and they're like, hey, as you can see, it's super high quality. So as far as prices, it definitely costs more, all right? And, and even if they don't ask, like when, I, when they cut the penny, I'm like, hey, as you can see, super high quality. I'm like, so obviously, I'm like, it's going to be more. I'm like, we'll go through prices later, all I right? I think that I, when I was going to my uncle's um, appointment, I told him to put the penny in, in the bridge, and he's like, can it, he was joking around, but he was like, can it be a quarter? And I didn't answer him. I got there. And when I brought the penny out, he's like, oh, yeah, because he's going to cut the penny. And then um, I cut the penny, and he's like, he just stayed like that. He was like, and he grabbed him. He was like looking at it like it wasn't real. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, it's super impressive. I mean, our, our stuff is phenomenal, all right? So you guys can feel really good about that. So we did step one. We connected. We did a price plug. Step two, we told them about the company. We established credibility for the company and at the same time started setting the price expectation because we are showing them a product that's guaranteed forever and it's the best of its kind. Everyone good? All right. Step three, um, uh, we go into page four, which is what? What's our objective here? Creating, creating a problem. We've got to create a problem. If they don't, if there isn't a problem, they don't need a solution, all right? Who here wants to sell more sets, by the way? Anyone here want to sell more sets? You want to talk about sets more, all right? Actually, you guys can do this. We kind of rewind. Go to page two, right up top here, where it says um, find something to compliment, all right? Find something to compliment and say um, you want to make a little note that says what a beautiful set of and then you're going to compliment. Everyone buys things in sets. What a beautiful set of furniture. What a beautiful set of tapestries. What a beautiful set of candlesticks. What a beautiful set of glasses. What a beautiful set of kids. All right. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, they're thinking about sets. Exactly. Psychologically. All right. There's a lot of psychology in advertising and sales. Making sure that you guys, that your customer is thinking about sets. Because, guys, yes or no, do people buy sets in their home? No, your mom doesn't have like a dresser that totally does not match the bed. No, you buy a set, or, you know, a set for the room. So people buy things in sets. That's like a normal thing to do. So just bringing those things up. What a beautiful set of this. What a beautiful set of that. So on page four, back to page four, um, this is huge. One of my guys, Artie Bartholomew. Artie was a great rep. Artie had a $450 average order. It was between four and 500 bucks, all right? The kid always sold pieces. I'm like, are you kidding me? Four hundred, like that's a high average order to have for selling pieces. Usually, people that sell pieces only have like a hundred, fifty, two hundred dollar average order. That's a lot of pieces. And yeah, 
And I'm like, Artie, how is that possible? He's That's like, I don't know. Said. Everybody always wants pieces. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm sorry. I've been doing this for a long time. I was like, no way. Uh, and so he's like, can you watch my demo? And I was like, sure. And I watched his demo. And he did an awesome demo. He really did a hell of a job, all right? But I never, ever, ever heard him say the word set until he was like, do you want to buy a set? And it was like, oh, no, no, I just want people. Like, everything was like, oh, knives, pieces, this, knives like this, knives like that, knives like that. And they always bought a lot of knives. But he never mentioned the word set ever. I said, yeah, I said, all you have to do, I said, just replace um, the word knives with sets or sets of knives. So even on this page, when you go in and you say wood handles, you want to say sets with wood handles, sets with plastic handles, sets with carbon steel, sets with stainless steel. That's what I had him change, and I gave him a couple other things that I'll give you one of the phrases later with the names and uses. And guys, his next demo, he sold a gourmet set. His next one, he sold a homemaker. And then I got and he his average order went up to like six hundred something dollars just from that little change, and he started selling sets all the time. All right, he's like, oh, oh, you're right. I'm like, yeah. Then we're never thinking about sets, and then you're like, do you want a set? I'm like, so, but if you present it as like that's how you sell it, just like you buy a bedroom set, just like you buy any set. Um, well, that's what they're expecting to buy is a set. I was like, you just never set that expectation. Um, so you guys go through here. Um, so guys, this section, just make sure ugly faces. Who made ugly faces and your customers made them back? Did anyone get that? Yeah. You're like, oh, the wood. Especially the wood. All right. So when you do a good job, you always get it back, right? The customer's like, oh. <laughs> um, and it's, uh, it's really funny sometimes. They're like, oh. Like, actually, Artie's demo, he was like, he had his junk and ice cream was unbelievable. And he's like, give me all these ugly faces. And the lady's like, oh, my God. Like, she was so grossed out with, like, the wood. And she like went over to her drawer, like looked in, and she pulled out a wood knife. It looked pretty gross, and she was like, "Oh!" And she like grabbed some of the wood knives, and she just threw it in the trash can. And she was like, "Well, I'm obviously gonna get something because that's disgusting, you know." And I was like, "Nice," um, but creating that problem. Now, by the way, when they have good stuff, you'll see it on their counter, you know. Or sometimes when they bring it out, you'll see that it's good. I want to make sure to create a problem for the top stuff too and this is i mean we're still we're building up the top stuff but i always plug and you can just put it wherever on the bottom um woo stuff shoon or just put high quality i need something to drink um no make sure it's clean this is my husband so i'll use it and then i had tea in the in the, in the microwave thank you so um uh, this right here you guys can make a note just woo stuff shoon or just in friends just put high quality if they have high quality stuff here's what you want to say biggest issue so the biggest issue with high quality is they have to be sharpened, like with the high quality brands. You don't have to write all that, but just the high quality brands, biggest issue, but they have to be sharpened all the time. And eventually, you will replace them. So again, they have to be, biggest issue is they have to be sharpened all the time. Have to be sharpened all the time. And eventually, you will replace them. And eventually, you will replace them. Um, I was asked, um, how, yeah, the, you never have to sharpen them again, or, and you send them, but how come this set uh, brings the, the sharpener? Oh, they and ask like, me that, but that's for the pair, yeah. right? That's for the couple straight edges that are in the set, so they can touch those up a couple times a year. So the straight edges do need to be touched up a couple times a year. The, ser the serrated, the double D, like with the points, those are going to stay sharp for a good 7 to 10 years. Um, but let them know. Be like, that, that's only for the street edges only. You want to touch those up a couple times a year. All right? So they'll always have a sharp knife because the company will always make sure they are sharp. They either sharpen them for free, they'll replace them for free, but you do need to touch up um, street edge knives. All right? So just so you guys uh, remember that. All right? Correct. Basic homemaker. Yeah. Homemaker plus eight and the basic. So let, let's finish through here. Let's finish through tips. So we're on section. Uh, three, which is creating the problem. So again, biggest problem with high, the high quality sets is they just have to be sharpened all the time, and eventually you're going to replace them. And guess what they're going to say? Oh yeah, definitely. All right. And you're like so. Anyway, let me show you uh, how Cutco has solved all these problems, and then boom, we go over to uh, page five, which is step four. What's our objective in this section? Enable all right. Um, is build value for the solution. All right. So I don't know if you guys noticed this before. So first thing is on the top where it says there's five features that make Cutco the world's finest set of cutlery. Put let me tell you why they cost what they do. So all the way in the top where it says there's five sets. There's five features that make Cutco the world's finest set of cutlery. Put let me tell you why they cost what they do. Let me tell you why they cost what they do. All right. And guys, again, this is the 
you know, building the price, building the value. Well, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but it's actually in here. It's in your manual already. The whole like explaining the price, this costs more because of this, this costs more because of that. It's in there. If you guys look on the first feature, Universal White Lock Candle, if you look at number two, it says this makes Cutco more expensive, but it's worth it because of the unique feature. On the second, when you talk about thermal resin, if you look at the third thing, it says it's an expensive material to use, but it's worth it because it's dishwasher safe. And on the third one, the handle, uh, on number two, it says using the extra steel is more expensive, but it's worth it because it provides support. Do you guys see how it's already in there? It says that a lot. All it's right, on each it. one. And so that's what I'm telling you guys needs to be done, not just here, but from the beginning of the demo all the way through. And those were the things I was weaving in. But to make sure you guys aren't just reading the paper, but understanding that your objective every time is to tell them, like, hey, here's this feature. Here's what we use. And it costs more to use that, but it's great because it provides blank benefits. And that's what you're going through there uh, through every feature. Everyone got that? All right. So when they, you go ahead. They will, be, they will expect something more expensive. And when you get to the price, they will be like, wow. Exactly. We want them thinking it's going to be like all the way up here. Who has their, can I use your, your kit real quick? All right. When you guys go to cut the rope, I want to make sure, because I've seen people before use the, the wrong knife. Or actually, no, you're fine. I have one here. I lied. All right. Uh, you guys want to make sure you're pulling um, your, this is number one. This is the first one they see. All right. Petite carver. Polish that bad boy up and then hand it over to them. All right. And when you guys are cutting, don't forget that you always have them start and pretend this is the rope, all right? And then they're always gonna wanna do this. So make sure you always start on the back, pull it, and you hold one side of the rope and they can hold the other side and you say, hey, pull back and forth. So they pull, then they're cutting, all right? And they're going through. And then they grab their straight edge and the same thing, hey, start in the back, press down hard, go full strokes. And then, hey, here, grab ours, start in the back, go all the way through, you know? And if they don't do it in one, have them do it again. And then, guys, you can stand it up as you tell them about the double D edge, all right? Uh, and so, Sebastian, real quick, um, can you give them some quick tips? Uh, by the way, Sebastian started with me. Sebastian, you started summer of 2009, right? Yeah. Okay. Summer of 2009, he started working uh, with us. So, going on, it's three years now. Uh, I guess it's next week. Uh, it's a three-year anniversary. But started off, uh, when he started off, at his first promotion right off his first two sales, um, I believe it was, maybe first sale. I don't know, I was like just yeah, shy, um, uh, but knocked out his first promotion, his second promotion, his second day, uh, just shy of hitting his third promotion, left up north to run a marathon, uh, came back, was working part-time around like a tennis club doing other things, uh, school, and, and was still one of our top performers, was accepted into our aggressive growth and leadership school, AGL school, which those of you who get to go tomorrow will hear about this, but he was accepted into that program, and over the school year of the fall and spring, he trained. And he was selected to do the entrepreneurship internship and run his own office in Puerto Rico. Summer of 2010, he went over to Puerto Rico on the south part of the island and ran his summer office there as his internship. And then came back to finish up classes at FIU his last two years. He just graduated from FIU uh, and is now going to be pursuing this as a, uh, a full-time. He's never sold full-time as a career professional. And, and really be able to uh, have an unlimited income opportunity. He had seven job offers right after graduation by the way, and turn them down uh, to do this uh, and really pursue selling uh, just because he knows the potential that's here and just how much growth there's available in this company. Uh, and so that's a pretty cool thing. But you guys will learn a lot. If anyone needs help with Spanish tips or anything, um, him and Mariana are your go-tos. Uh, but he's really been a, a consistent performer, uh, and I'm excited to see. He just got back from San Diego. All the top guys were out there. Um, these guys are in advanced training right now. Um, uh, half of them have knocked out their first promotions and are ready to roll for tomorrow. Half of them have not. Uh, and so what tips would you give them as they go into today um, to get to the SLDM tomorrow? And also any tips you'd say um, in the fresh start um, to help them in their fast start? What would be your biggest like words of wisdom? How many are you in school? Okay, quite a few. Um, this summer. Tip. He's not taking classes this summer. Or online. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, my biggest tip is uh, just the more calls you make, the more points you're going to book, and therefore it leads to sales. Um, right now, I know you just started, but we have the best, best knives, best products in the world. I, I'm a true believer of that. You know, I have a lot of customers. I have a lot of people that literally sign testimonials with people that just had them for 48 years, 50 years, and they're still using them. And they're great. So right now, the biggest thing is trust in the product. I get calls back from people saying, you know, oh, you sold me this, but wow, thank, thank you.
because it was such a great investment. I never thought it would be. I was hoping you know, I was a college kid, but this stuff is still working. It's still really good. So feel proud of that. Feel that you, whenever you go to your customer's house, you're doing, you're offering them the best, okay? It's the difference between, you know, selling like a Kia or like a Rolls Royce. That's what you're doing. You're selling the Rolls Royce. You're selling the best. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing I can give you. Just have confidence, be there, and mostly have fun. Um, you're learning a lot of tips right now with advanced training, and some of you already just shyly got over the whole hump of actually doing a demo with, you know, getting used to doing an appointment. Feel that nervousness going out of the way a little bit, but just have fun. Have fun. You probably have fun in a couple of the appointments. Just have fun, enjoy yourself, let them have fun, and you're doing your job literally. That's that's mainly what you have to do. Just have fun. Mm -hmm. that's what and what would you say? Would you say it's worth them? Um, Working hard to get invited to go tomorrow. Oh my gosh, yeah. If it wasn't for Jeff Gamboa doing his uh, his awesome talks, her manager, and just giving you the best tips possible. If you think advanced training is a tip, SLDM is going to blow you away. All right, you're literally, I have a lot, including myself, but I have a lot of friends that went to the SLDM the next day, sold their first grand order, grand sale, kitchen system, which you don't know which Jeff will teach you that. Mm -hmm. And it's just an awesome, if you could get there, by all means, uh, I'm doing my best to just go ahead and do some appointments today. Uh, you, if you're in your fast start, you should definitely take advantage of it. I cool. guarantee it. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Keep up today. All right. um, we'll see you later. All right. So uh, this right here, so make sure you guys are doing the cutting demonstration the right way. All right. And then, guys, on page six, I want you guys just leading into the guarantee, just make a note that says the biggest reason Cutco costs what it does is because of the guarantee, all right? So the biggest reason, the biggest reason, and Chris, do you not have your training manual? No. The biggest reason Cutco costs what it does is because of the guarantee. Biggest reason Cutco costs what it does is because of the guarantee. Hey, Randy, make sure we're driving um, phone switch. I know a lot of people don't, they don't, they don't like the whole, I know a lot of people, they don't like the whole act, the whole sales act, they don't buy it. You've done they two don't. appointments. You don't need to have a sales act, I just want you to have some fun with them. Cool? Well, so. well I've been, well, where, where, the way I grew up is not to, not to buy any type of act or any type of basis, they won't, they put a solid face. And yeah, they, so you're not doing an act, you're showing them the products and they're using them. Yeah. That's what I just showed them the product. Yep, and you want to make sure you're on here and you learn the stuff so you're giving the right information about the product because that's called facts. Um, so you're making sure to help them it's out. Right. Don't she, she, you guys, you guys have everything. All right. Um, so anyway, um, this right here, making sure. So you're like, hey, biggest reason Cutco costs, um, Cutco costs what it does because of the guarantee. Make sure they know that because why? Why does Snap-on Tools cost what it does? Because of the guarantee. You know. Uh, like the, it costs more because someone's buying it once and they're going to have it for the rest of their life. So obviously it's going to cost more. And then guys, you go through each part of the guarantee with them. Uh, anytime you can tell personal stories, anyone you guys bump into, it's always good to be able to share that with your customers. So I want to make sure you guys are doing that. All right. Um, uh, then last few things. And, and guys, any questions, just hold them so I finish just because we started late and then I'll, I'll go through. I want to give you guys all these tips because I've got a lot of good information. Um, page seven. That's your, your fifth objective. Here is creating a specific need. They need to understand how they're going to use everyone. Your objective here is they go, oh, yeah, I use that. Oh, yeah, I use that. Oh, yeah, I use that. The basic set is seven knives, two forks, and a spatula. They need to understand how to use them if they're going to want to get it. So as you're going through here, um, I have a couple quick tips for you guys. One uh, is uh, I always use nicknames in order um, for the customer to connect with the tool quicker. But not only for the customer to connect with the tool, but also for you to really learn your tools, all right? And so what I mean by that is if you're showing a customer a set and you're saying, hey, uh, this right here, this set has the uh, pairing, the trimmer, the spatula, the petite carver, uh, the turning fork, and the chef knife, and the slicer, they, they might not know what they're used for versus if I say, hey, this one has the air knife the small utility, the sandwich maker, the everyday carving and prep, the turning fork, the chopper, and the bread knife. Do you guys see the difference? So if I tell them, hey, this set that you like has the, uh, the air knife, the sandwich maker, the turning fork, the everyday carving and prep knife, and that chopper that you liked, it, it automatically reminds them of what that knife was used for uh, so they have that connection, all right? And it, again, helps you guys learn your tools. So some of these already have the, 
they have the nickname. Um, so you could just circle, but here's how you want to refer to these. The parry knife would be air knife. The trimmer, you can just write small before utility, so I just put small utility knife, all right? Small utility knife. The spatula, I call it the sandwich maker, all right? So just make a little note. The sandwich maker. The petite carver, it's a little bit longer, but this this is a better, I feel like it's a better description. I call it the, the everyday carving and prep knife, all right? Everyday carving and prep knife. Some people call it the medium carving prep, but it's an everyday carving and prep knife. All right? Everyday carving and prep knife. Then you have the turning fork, which that's what it is. So you can just circle turning fork. All right? Butcher knife, circle heavy duty. You want to refer to it always as the heavy duty. It's already there. You can just circle it. Then chef, you can put delicate chopper. Put their delicate chopper. On the slicer, you can put bread knife. And then the, ma the carving knife and the carving fork, I, I put them together and call it the master carving set. The master carving set. So you just put those together. So I'm going to give you two key phrases you guys can use while you're going through here uh, to help you with your customers. So that uh, a great transitional phrase and a great phrase to say before you tell them what the knife is used for. All right. So you could write these both on page seven. <coughs> so you have the transitional phrase and then the, the phrase before they give uses. So I'll write these on the board here. All right. So the first the first phrase is the transitional phrase. You're going to say the next tool in your set is all right, the next tool in your set. All right, this is an awesome transitional phrase. Every time you're like, oh, hey, the next tool in your set is that air knife. The next tool in your set is that small utility. So you're always going to say the nickname, all right? So the next tool in your set is the nickname. What stands out in this phrase, by the way, guys? Tool. Tool. Set. What else? Your sets. All right, the word your because it's ownership, and they're like, oh, what's the next tool in my set? Oh, what's the next tool in my set? So they have that and then the word set, set. all right? So uh, if you have someone who's in sales, they'll hear you and they'll be like, oh, the next one, my set. You just nod your head and go, uh-huh. And they're like, oh, okay, just checking. Uh, sales people are the easiest sales because they know the sales approach. And if you do a good job, like, man, you know, you should work for me. You did better than blank and blank. Um, but making sure you guys are going through there, creating that ownership. The other thing is, instead of telling them, this knife is used for blah, 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 blah. Well, what did I tell you your objective is? Is that the customer, every time, what is the objective of, in this section? That they go, yeah, I use that. All right, so they, they connect with that tool. So instead of just telling them what it's used for, here's a great way to make sure you always get a yes. You say, do you ever cut, and then you give the uses. All right, do you ever cut, all right? So do you ever make sandwiches or have brownies or pies? What are they gonna say? Yeah, yeah. we do that. All right, do you guys ever cut tomatoes or limes or oranges? Or they're like, yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, cool, that's what you do. Do you guys ever peel, you know, like in the air? Or like, so I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like, yeah, you can use it for this, this and that. Do you guys ever have like medium-sized roots and veggies or like leftover carving or like little, you know, small chicken? Okay, great, that's what you do. Do you guys ever turn anything on the stove when you're cooking or serve at the table? Great, that's what you do. Do you guys ever have like freezer stuff or tougher jobs you can't get through? Cool, that's what you do as a butcher. Do you guys ever that's like dice and chop for like, do you guys ever make omelets? Do you guys ever make soups or stews or um, so? Oh, okay, cool. Here's what you'd want to use so much quicker for dicing and chopping. Do you guys ever have uh, ice cream cakes or breads or anything you need a bread? Okay, you'd use the bread knife. Do you guys ever carve a turkey for any holidays or anything like, or if I need or ham? Okay, cool. Well, here's your master carving stuff. Do you guys see how like every time it's like, yeah, of course, yeah, okay, yeah, we do that. Okay, so they might not do it every day, but guys, don't forget, Calco is not something they're going to use this week or this month or this year. They're going to have this forever. All right, so this is a great phrase. I know Victoria, one of my girls, um, uh, this helped her out a ton, and Valerie, one of my girls, Valerie, um, she, uh, her first weekend, she had only sold uh, like just random pieces or something. She's like, 
yeah, they just told me that I can use all the stuff. I said, use that. Uh, and then I told her, if there's anyone that they say, well, I don't know that we ever use that, say, well, why don't you try it out with the rest of the set for the three weeks? And if at that time you really don't think you'd use it, send it back. You'll get 100% of your money back. All right? Uh, and so, by the way, guys, anybody, uh, so you know, anybody can send back any individual piece um, to the company, like from their set, they can send back one knife and they'll get the full amount, the full retail price of that knife they'll get refunded for. Reason being is they're gonna pay shipping to send it back. So even though the set's discounted, customers paying shipping, so the company will refund them full retail price. Sounds good? But always encourage them, hey, use it with the rest of the set for the three weeks. If at that time you really don't think you use it, you can totally send it back. By the way, next demo, Valerie sold her first uh, homemaker set. She's like, it worked. And I was like, yeah. She's like, yeah, I told him to try out the, I didn't think they'd use the butcher as much. And I was like, yeah. She's like, she said, I did that. And they were like, okay, you know what? Yeah, let's do that. Because um, the fact is, like, they're going to use it, you know, and they ended up loving it. Um, uh, then uh, the other thing is, you know, and then um, Victoria, one of my girls, this helped her a ton because she, she wasn't like getting, they're like, oh, I'm not going to use those. Where now when she was saying, hey, then I, you know, do you ever cut? They're like, oh, yeah, I do that. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden she's like, now they're telling me they're going to use each piece. Where before they were like, when I'm just telling them, they weren't really paying attention. So it makes it more interactive. It helps them connect and it helps them see why they would need that set. Sounds good? All right. So making sure, and guys, um, if you really want to do well in this video, you want to have more names and uses. There, there's more names and uses if you go on cutco.com and look up each tool. There's more names and uses here on the bottom of each tool, so check that out, all right? But you wanna have like 10 to 15 uses for every tool. So the more uses you can have, if you go on Vector Connect, there's advanced names and uses, there's more tools there, you know? So even like with a pair, I'm like, oh, if you're doing kiwi or star fruit or, you know, pitting cherries or, I mean, there's a lot more things you guys can add in there. Even with the trimmer on there, it doesn't say limes, lemons, oranges, grapefruit, you know? Like, so adding all those things that you would do small slicing with. All right, so just again, that, that all comes with self-study, that comes with checking out the website, that comes with you guys going on Vector Connect uh, and checking out additional things. And guys, the last step uh, is closing your sale. All right, closing your sale. So my first tip for closing more sales is know your freaking close. Uh, mm. Get your nine and 10 down, it makes a big difference because when you're more confident, you're gonna sell more, you know? And when they see that you know what you're talking about, it makes them more confident. To, to buy bigger, all right? So really get comfortable with this. My next tip would be um, the ads, print out your own. Go to Williams Sonoma, go to Cutlery and print out your own ads to use. The two that the two sets that are on here, by the way, these are on the Williams Sonoma website. Print them out yourself and be like, oh, these are some things I printed out. Go buy them all, take pictures of some of the stuff that's in Williams Sonoma and be like, oh, if you go to buy Top Kitchen Store, here's what you're gonna find, you know? And really showing so they're like, oh wow, like they know you've done your research. You're not just telling them what they told you to tell them. You've actually gone and checked yourself. And you're like, hey, here's what top stuff is gonna cost in stores. And hey, here's how we compare. All right. So it really gives more confidence again to the customer. Um, then guys, um, on the bottoms, um, uh, my my you guys heard this in training, but I can't stress how much uh, writing down things, all right, makes a difference. And actually, Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. Can you hear me? Jonathan, he's on the phone. All right, so when he's done, but I'm uh, making sure so you guys have, so here's how, here's how this should roll. When you guys are meeting with a customer, you guys wanna make sure uh, to, again, write everything down. So I get to uh, the bottom of here. So I'm like, so when something is twice as good, offers twice the quality and value, and lasts twice as long, you'd be expecting twice the price. And at twice the price, you're talking over five thousand uh, dollars for a basic set of cutco, all right? And let me show you what you get. And you just leave it there so they could stare at it. And if they say five thousand, you're like, yeah. You're like, it's like buying a Sub Zero fridge, you know? It's like buying a whole set of Snap On tools, uh, except you know, it's, it's all guaranteed forever. But let me show you what you got. I'm like, you don't have to get everything, but let me show you what you got. So this right here is our complete set, all right? This right here is our complete set. This is, and here we go, all right? This right here is our best set people like to entertain, like to cook, uh, and uh, then we have one over here, and you guys can open it up if you want to, like just flip it over. For the complete, you can just show the front picture. This is our complete set, this is our best people like to cook and entertain. We have one in between this called the signature set, and so this one right here, has uh, just a couple of the most uh, used pieces 
added to the basic set. And then we have our basic set, which these two here are our most popular sets, the Homemaker Plus 8 and the Basic Homemaker. They both come with the 10 tools I explained, the 7 knives, 2 forks, and the spatula. They come in the block cutting board. The Plus 8 has a setting of 8 table knives. You can always add more. Very practical and complete set. The other one's the same thing, but without the table knives, all right, because some people like to buy the stainless steel flatware or something on the side. Um, so our company has found that one of these tets, um, sets appeals to just about everybody, um, but the beautiful thing about it, and obviously if you're sitting with the customer, is that they're not $5,000, although they would be if they were sold in stores. As a matter of fact, they're not even as much as this set here, which you saw, uh, which is $3,325, all right. Our Homemaker Plus 8 with the table knives is actually only $10.79. And, um, and by the way, you wouldn't have to pay for it all now. We have a, you can put it into interest-free payments. Yeah, and it would be $232 um, uh, is what it would cost. Um, that would be uh, interest-free payments. And then our basic is $864. And again, you wouldn't have to pay all that. The deposit for that is $187, all right, to try that one out. Now, if you're considering a set of Cutco, would you prefer the Plus 8 or the Basic? Plus 8. Plus 8? All right, cool. Um, uh, so let me explain something called First Call Special. First Call Special allows me to give you free merchandise when you place an order my first visit. So if you got that set today, I can actually give you as a free gift, you know, I could actually give you the kitchen tool set um, or the Super Shears for free as a uh, for free gift. Which one of those would you prefer? Kitchen. The, kitchen the Kitchen Tools. The Kitchen Tools? All right, cool. Well, hey, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you guys, would you like to go out and put down the 232, um, get the free kitchen tools, and try that set out today? Would you guys want to do that? Sure. Okay. And, guys, as, in terms of asking for the order, I don't care how you ask as long as you're expecting a yes. It doesn't need to be verbatim, you know? Um, but, hey, you guys want to try that out? You guys want to do that? All right. Now, I'm going to show you real quick. Don't write anything down yet. But I'm going to show you something real quick. It's an advanced closing that I love. And for those of you who catch it, it's money in the back, all right? And it's something we call the, depo the security deposit close, or some people call it the deposit program, the trial close, the soft close. You'll hear to, uh, of it referred so many different ways, all right? And I'm just going to show you it so you can see what it looks like. So uh, everything the same. So I say, all right, so bottom of page 9, hey, so you're talking over $5,000. Uh, for a basic set of Cutco, all right? Now let me show you what you get. Um, these right here, and I do everything exactly the same, all right? Um, now the great thing about it is that it's not $5,000, although it would be if it was sold in stores. As a matter of fact, it's not even as much as this set here, which is $3,325. Um, uh, our basic set with the table knives is actually only $1079, all right? And uh, by the way, you could pay for it all today, all right? But most people don't. What most people do is they use our deposit program. All right, and our deposit program allows you to put down a hundred percent refundable security deposit. All right, and what this allows you to do, it allows you to get the products and actually have three weeks to try it out. Do you feel like you could make a better decision if you had a couple weeks to try it out? Yeah, for sure. So it gives you three weeks to just try it and make sure you love it. All right, the deposit for this would be two thirty-two, and. Worst case scenario, like it, you send it back, you get 100% of your deposit back. Best case, you guys love it, you have it forever. Last set of knives you bought. So you can, you know, call and pay it off. Um, then our basic one is 864, and if you wanted to try that set, the 100% refundable deposit is only 187 for that one. All right? Now, if you were consider, you know, like, if you are considering a set, which one would you prefer? Okay, great. Hey, first call special. Okay, great scissors. Um, so, deal. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you, would you guys want to go ahead and pay for it all today? Or would you guys um, want to, you know, would you guys be down to put down a 100% refundable deposit and try the set out? Is that something you guys would want to do? I would like to put the deposit down there. Cool. All right. So do you guys see the difference in closing there? We're, we're, we're repackaging the security deposit. We're repackaging the 15-day unconditional money back. We're just saying it different. Instead of saying, do you want to buy this today in interest repayments, I'm saying, hey, you could pay for it all at one time, but what some, what a lot of people like to do is just do our deposit where you can put down a 100% refundable security deposit and try it out for three weeks. Sweet. And guys, what is that? What is that? Sweet on an additional week? No. Okay. All right. Three weeks, 15 business days. So customers get 15 business days, which is three weeks. Oh, all so right? Weekends don't, three weeks count. Uh, weekends don't count. All oh, right, so business business. they get 15 right. business days um, to use the products, make sure they're fully satisfied, and if for any reason they're not, send them back. So again, we're explaining that fourth part of the guarantee a different way. So instead of saying, 
hey, you have this with five months, no interest. Instead, you're saying, hey, you could pay for it all now, Theo, but what most people do is they'll put down 100% refundable deposit to just try it out. That gives you three weeks from when you get it to make sure you love it. Worst case, you send it back. Cool. Uh, our basic one, this is the deposit for that one. So if you're considering a set, which would you prefer, the complete or the basic? Um, I need to grab a seat there, Jessica. All right, great. Hey, that the deposit for that one is only 232 And again, when you get it, you have three weeks to use it. Make sure you love it. Worst case, you send it back, you get 100% of your money back. Is that something you guys are comfortable with? Cool. Does anyone see how that can make people more comfortable? Yeah. So you're just <laughs> sure. on the deposit program, right. which is just like deposits, just the first payment, really. That is. It is exactly what it is. Can you ask him for the green sheets with all the deposits? Just say, Kathy needs green sheets with all the deposits. Um, so, by the way, that's money. Elias Palacios, his first weekend, did 11 appointments. And off those appointments, he only had three sales. From those three sales, he combined for $400, okay? What I just showed you and what I'm about to teach you, the trade-in special, that night he sold over two grand. The next week he was number 16 in the country, and he was one of my top reps that summer, all right? Um, but his first weekend went three for 11. This, he's like, oh, this is great. Because, uh, you know, some people like, the fact is, they weren't planning on spending money today, and so you're like, you could pay in full, but most people, they just put a deposit, they could try it out, and then make a decision. Um, and that's really what you're asking, all right? So this right here, is really helpful. There's going to be extra sets here you don't know, which is okay. Um, but what I want you guys to see, this is what would be the the security deposit is right here, the five fits. So this is the 100% refundable deposit. So you have them all in one page. Like I cannot do a demo without this. I always have. I had this like in a plastic and a page protector. When I was doing the comparison, I had it right behind, so I knew my prices and I could do it quick. All right. So this is really helpful uh, to getting prices quick for the customers. So grab one of these and pass them down so you guys all have one. And then pass the extras up to the front. All right? So you guys like that? That's way smarter. All right? So yeah, it's a beautiful thing. All right? It's awesome. So and then, and then if they say, all right, and listen up. Let me show you guys a quick drop down. One of my biggest things, this is my last tip on closing before I show you guys the, the actual trade-in special. One of my... When I was new, one of the biggest things that I had trouble with, and I see a lot of reps have trouble with it too, and I understand why, is dropping down. Because sometimes when you show the homemaker, the customer says, oh, but I just want to get pieces. And you're like, oh, but let me show you the set. And they're like, oh, but I just want pieces. Oh, but let me show you. It's almost like you're not listening to them, right? And they can get really aggravated with you, and you feel weird and pushy because you're trying to show them a set, but they're saying they just want pieces, right? <laughs> let me show you a beautiful way to drop down very easily, all right? So I just showed my customer and I said, so let me do it again for you guys, okay? Let me do that, that part again, the trial close. So I'm on the bottom of page nine and I said, well, you're talking twice the quality, twice the value. You're talking over $5,000 uh, for a basic set of Cutco, all right? Now let me show you what you got. These right here are two most popular, you know, this right here is our complete set. Uh, this is our set for people who like to, you know, cook and entertain. Um, we have one in between, which is called our signature set for people who do a decent amount of cooking. And then we have these two, which I just showed you the tools, the one that has seven knives, two forks, and a spatula. These are our most popular. They come in the block with the cutting board. Um, uh, this one comes with the traditional setting of eight table knives. They both come with a sharpener. Very practical and complete set. The other one's the same thing without the table knives, all right? Now, our company has found, again, the one who says to be with everyone. The great thing about it is that it's not $5,000. And again, this should be exactly what's going on your paper, you know, when you're writing it for the customer. Um, it's actually not even as much as this much here, which is $3,325. Actually, um, our homemaker plus a Fiontia, like, it's actually only ten seventy nine. dollars Pretty cool, all right? And that's because we're not sold in stores. So you could pay for it all at one shop, but what most people do, we have a, de uh, a deposit program that actually allows you to put down 100% refundable security deposit, all right? So that way, you could actually get the products and try them out, all right? And what it gives you, it gives you three weeks from when you get it to just try it and make sure you love it, all right? The deposit for this one is 232 so you would get the products, and from when you got it, you would have three weeks, all right, um, to use the products, make sure you love them. Worst case scenario, send them back. You have free cocoa for three weeks. You know, best case, you guys love them. Now, the, the, the set without the table knives is $864, and if you wanted to try that one out, the security deposit to try that out is $187, all right? So if you were considering a set, which would you prefer, the plus eight or the basic? Plus eight. Plus eight, plus eight? all right, awesome. 
Um, well, let me tell you about something called First Call Special. First Call Special allows me to, um, you know, place an order. I give you a free merchandise when you place an order on my first visit. So if you guys wanted to try that set out, all right, you could actually get, you could also try out the kitchen tool set or the scissors with the set. Uh, and that all goes well. You guys get to keep those for free forever, all right? So which would you prefer, the kitchen tools or the scissors? Kitchen tools? Kitchen all right, cool. Well, hey, Theo, Thea, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you guys. Would you guys... Uh, would you guys want to go ahead and just get it all today on um, paper, or would you rather put down a deposit um, so you can try it out for a couple weeks and then make a decision? What would you guys prefer? Try it, try it out. Try it out. Okay, so the deposit is 232 You get it. You have three weeks to use it. Make sure you love it. And again, if anything, you can always send it back, but I'm sure you guys are going to love it. So you guys are cool with that? All right, great. Do you guys see how much more comfortable the customer is? All right. So Sounds that's the close. Better. So then I say they go, let's say they go, I right, honey, I just, I don't want all that right now. I don't want that one. All right. So everyone on the bottom of page 10, what does it say all the way on the bottom? The last thing on the bottom of page 10, what does it say? No problem. No problem. We do have two similar sets for a lot. Underneath that, what does it say? For the first page of the notebook. No, no, cross that out. Okay. All right, oh, cross it out. I want you yeah. to cross that out. Do not turn to first. Do not turn, just cross it out. I don't even want you guys to pull out the back pocket. I want you guys to write all the way in the bottom. So you see mine? The pink, I just crossed it out and I put show galley on pages eight and nine, names and uses. So you're going to go right back here to the names and uses page. Page eight and nine. All right, so Tia says, oh no, I don't want to do all that right now. I'm like, all right, hey, no problem. We have two smaller sets a lot of people like. Um, and these were rated Best Buys by Consumer Digest. So you should be right here, all right? Top of page 11. Everyone turn to top of page 11. What does it say when it says explain pieces? The next option is like well, it says it's, it's, the, it's the homemaker set. set. That's why this is perfect. <laughs> so you just go, yeah, there's two sets under this that are a really good deal. It's basically this set, but it doesn't have the butcher knife, and it doesn't have the master carving set, and it's missing two table knives. You guys all see that, right? Um, uh, and so I'm like, so the Galley Plus 6, the, uh, it still comes in a block, and the Galley Plus 6 is 6 seven eighty five. And again, you could pay for it all, or if you want to try it out, the deposit is 169 which means basically you're putting aside 42 bucks a week. The basic one, if you wanted to do it without the table knives, is 609 And the deposit, if you wanted to try it out, is 132 all right? Which means that you would be putting aside 33 bucks a week. Is that the? Is that something you feel comfortable with? Yeah. Cool. And if you still got one of these, you can still do the kitchen tools or the scissors. All right. So which one of these would you prefer? The plus six. All right. Cool. And would you want the scissors or the kitchen tools? Kitchen tools. All right. Cool. And and did you want to pay for it all now, or you rather just do the deposit? Deposit. Cool. All right. So we'll write it up. You want that at Classic or Pro? All right. Now, if they say, you know what, I don't want to do that. So it's it's like it's it's a really quick. It's an immediate thing. It's like. Do you want to get the homemaker? They say, I know, honey, I don't want to do all that. I'm like, all right. Oh, no, well, hey, we have one underneath it that pretty much is this set, but it's missing this, 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 right? And the price is blah, 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 and you do that. So does that work better for you? They say yes or no. And if they say no, here's what I want you guys to, to do, all right? I want you guys, you guys know how I had you write down. If I ask you, um, uh, can I just buy pieces, what do you say? Yes. 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 No, what do you say? Yes, some, some people, people like to pick up the Okay, so we're going to evolve that. Don't turn the page. Before we say something like, oh yeah, Thea, somebody to pick out the favorite pieces, you're going to ask them and you can make a little note on the side that says, if we're going to make your perfect set, what are your four to five favorites? And write them down. All right, so just ask them. If they ask about pieces, say, hey, yeah, Thea, some people would like to pick out their favorite pieces. You know, customize their own set, sets are a better deal. But yeah, what are your, if we made your perfect set, what are your four to five favorites? And write them down. So I'm going to do that with you. So, Theo Angel, if you had to pick four or five of your favorite pieces, what are your four or five favorites? Spatula spreader. Uh-huh. Butcher. Okay. The chef knife and the trimmer. And the trimmer. Any others? The carving set. Okay. Carving. So just like the big carver? Okay, 
So you said spatula, butcher, chef, trimmer, carver. Okay. Well, Theo, just so you know, we can definitely um, customize something with the pieces that you liked. We can, you know, put something together with that. Um, but we do have pre-made sets that are much better value. Let me show you the starter sets. You might see something you like. Do you guys see how that's incorporated in there? So they ask about pieces. I'm like, oh, yeah, definitely. We have some like to pick out the favorite pieces, you know, customize your own set. Hey, what are your four to five favorite if you're going to make your perfect set? Write them down. And then I'm going to say... Um, all right, cool. Well, hey, Thea, we can definitely make something happen for you with that. Um, but I want to show you some pre-made sets we have um, uh, because they're a much better value. And they're like, all right. I'm like, let me just show you that. If not, we'll customize here. So it keeps them it keeps them knowing that you're on their side. Does that make sense? We're not ignoring their request about pieces. We're writing down the ones they like. And I'm like, all right, cool. Well, then let me show you this. And now I'm going to pull out the starter sets. And I'm like, all right, cool. So, and I want you guys to watch me do this because I'm going to have you guys point out the things that, like, what do you notice me do? All right, so Theo, Theo Angel. So, oh, this right here is the set I was telling you about before um, with the six table knives, which is almost like the homemaker. Now, this one, Theo, it has um, the, the air knife. It has the spatula that you liked. It has a turning fork, all right, and it has the petite carver. Um, so I know you had mentioned the carving set. This is actually kind of like the smaller version. It has a chopper that you liked, all right, but it doesn't have the butcher and it doesn't have the trimmer. So this might not be the best thing for you, but you could get one of those two for free with this. This one, Theo, has a pairing. It has a trimmer that you liked. It has a smaller carver and it has a spatula that you liked, but it doesn't have the butcher or the chef. So probably not the best thing for you. This one here has the two different size pairing knives. It has a trimmer that you liked has a smaller carver and has a chef, it doesn't have the, the, the butcher, it doesn't have the spatula, so again, might not be the best thing. Um, this one here has the pairing, and then it has the trimmer that you liked, it has a spatula that you liked, it has a carver that you liked, it has a chef that you like, Theo, and with this set, actually, you could actually do the butcher for free or the scissors for free. So whichever one of those you preferred, and so that looks like that might, might be a good one. And then this one, no, it doesn't have the ones that you like. So out of all those, which one of these do you like the best? This one? All right, cool. Um, that's what I thought would be the best. And that one, Theo, um, uh, for that set right there, that comes out to, it's uh, 439 okay? But again, if you wanted to do the deposit to try it out, all you would put down today would be 95 bucks. So basically, it's like putting aside 24 bucks a week. Is that something you'd be comfortable with? Yes. All right. So what did you guys notice? You referred to each list of what they want. Okay, I'm, I'm looking for the set. By the way, I already knew. When he picked out those pieces, I've done this so long, I'm like, oh, I'm going to sell them an all knife set with a free butcher or scissors. Um, uh, and I, I, because I already know the all knife set had four to five pieces that he liked, all right? But I'm pretending to be you. You're going to go through, and as you're going through, and do you guys see how the customer feels helped? Because you're like, oh, this one has the one you like. Oh, you know what? This is probably not a great one for you. So it's like, I'm offering what it's missing for free. Um, instead of the scissors, I, I was offering like the pieces that it's missing for free. Um, but I'm like, ah, oh, this is probably not the best. Oh, you know what? This one might work better for you. So we're like, we're working together as a team to find what's best according to what he likes. All right. So it's such a quicker close. So it's like homemaker, they don't want it. Show them the galley on the same pages. If not, ask them for their four to five favorites. So as you go through here, you're finding the one that has most of the pieces they liked. Sounds good. All right. And if they still don't want to do that, then you call to... So we can help you um, just custom a set for them or give them a free trade or whatever it is. All right, everyone good? So that makes dropping down so much quicker and so much more efficient. So um, uh, any questions on that so far, what I've covered so far? All right, feeling good? Wait till what I'm about to just show you right now. All right, so you're feeling good. Do you guys feel like already with what I've given you, do you guys feel like you could have sold more this weekend with what I just gave you? Yeah. All right. um, uh, let me show you something, all right? I call this the secret weapon, and this is money in the bank, all right? So, if I told you, you're with a customer, all right? You guys know how in a car dealership, you can trade in your old car. Do you guys know that? You can trade in your old, old car, and, and they give you credit, right? They give you credit for your car, whatever your car's worth. You know, they'll tell you what they'll give you for it. Why do car dealerships have that? Anyone... Oh, Why? To give people the incentive to, to, the to, buy. Stuff to get something new. Because if not, what could they say? Okay. I already have a car. What do I need a new one for? Right? Because they have a car. But they're like, hey, if you want to upgrade and get a newer car, you can trade yours in. We're going to give you credit for your car. You and that way you can get that newer car you want. Yeah. 
Instead of waiting until your car dies to get the new one, get it now. Trade in your car. We're going to give you money for it. That way you get. It's a closing tool. They know that the person has a car, but you want to upgrade them to a nicer car. So therefore, I'm going to let you give us your car, and we're going to give you credit. Um, that way you can get a deal. Well, guys, we do the same thing. All right? Any sets with table knives, um, uh, they can get some pretty awesome deals. And so, first of all, um, I want to I wanna tell you this. Do you guys remember how many, for every $100 someone spends, about how many points can they get for free? 20. 20, all right? And if you guys can actually just open your training manual and in the first page and in the inside and in the cover, just write this down so you have it there as a reminder, all right? Put it on there. So, 20, well, I'll just put it here. So, if they spend $100, they can get a maximum of 20 points for free for every hundred dollars they spend. So that Valeria, somebody buys three hundred fifty dollars from you, uh, what's the maximum points they can get? So you can actually go up to seventy. All right. Um, so midway there. If somebody buys five hundred dollars from you, what's the maximum points they can get for free? If they buy five hundred dollars, five times twenty, a hundred. Yeah. All right. Hundred points. All right. Someone buys a thousand dollars of cuckoo from you. How many points is maximum you can get for free? Two hundred. All right. Um, so on and so forth. Now, when someone trades in, it actually allows us to bump up the point level. So if someone ever trades in product, all right, with a trade in, it allows us to go for every hundred dollars. It allows us to go up to twenty five points per hundred. All right, twenty five points per hundred which makes a difference, all right, on stuff they can get for free. So that's something just in general, if somebody like ha is just buying pieces or whatever and they like trade in some of their knives, you could go up to 25 points per hundred to help close a sale. So you just bring that up if you need to close a sale. Uh, or maybe they ask you about it because you mentioned it when they were on the homemaker, but they didn't get it and they got something smaller and they're like, if I trade in, can I still get, and you're like, oh, well, you can get a little extra free stuff. So anytime they trade in, they can get a little extra free stuff, all right? Does everyone get that? It has to be the homemaker plus table. It has to have the table. Money. No, no, no. We're not talking about that yet. I'm going to okay. talk about that in a second. So just in general, when no, someone trades in stuff, it allows them to, you can go a little bit extra on free stuff. I everyone got that? Only. I'm going to tell you that. Does everyone understand that if someone gives you two or three knives, whatever the hell they give you, so we can, no. Uh, I'm going to answer <laughs> it after I explain it because I haven't explained the, the, the special yet. Perfect. I just want to make sure you guys understand. Instead of 20, if they trade it in, you could go up to... 25, all right? Whose phone is that? Is that your phone? Huh? This is back there somewhere. Right, it's coming from where they Huh? I think it's in that bag. Sorry, I didn't even know my phone was connected. Um, uh, all right. Surprise! So, anyway, so that's what you can do. So now instead, if you're selling 350, how much can I get for free here? Well, now I can go to like, almost like 90, 85, 90. If I'm buying 500 now, how much can I get for free here now? 125. If I'm buying a thousand dollars of product, how much can I get for free now? 250. All right. So just know that that's possible. If people trade in stuff, you can give a little extra free stuff. All right. Now, on sets that have table knives, complete set, signature set, homemaker plus eight, galley plus six, uh, essentials plus five, studio plus four, we have a special that the company calls the B block special. All right, and, and I call this the secret weapon, and it's the secret weapon to selling a lot of sets. You want to sell a lot of sets, you want to sell a lot of the larger sets, um, uh, the B-Block Special is the way that we do it. And so grab one of these and pass them down, and I'm going to explain this to you guys, all right? So grab one and pass it down. This is amazing. This helped me increase my hour, like, I mean, all the tips, but then like this, it was like so easy to close the bigger set sales, all right? And I, the, the complete set and the signature are not on here, but I'm going to go over that, okay? So this is for someone that feels like it's a little bit much. This is also really good for someone who has Henkels or Wusta, um, and they've had them, and they're, they're like not ready to replace their stuff yet. And so this is a really good way to, um, you know, have their stuff traded in. So if they have Henkels or Wusta, um, they're in one of two places. They're either ready to replace or they're not. If they're not, you supplement with accessories and other things that Kako makes. If they're ready to replace, this is awesome um, to, to replace whatever they're, they can trade in their stuff. And I'll ask them, hey, how much do you get, think you'd get for your knives at a garage sale? They're like, if they're good, they're like, I don't know, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. I'm like, cool. How about if I told you with the homemaker, you could either get a $180 discount or 
you could pay the regular price and get up to $325 of whatever you want for free. Would you possibly be excited about that? And they're like, what? Wait, what? For this? You would give me a $180 discount or $325 bucks free something? Like, yeah. And even if they're like nasty wood corroding knives, because guess where all those came from? Trade-in specials, all right? They could trade in two or three of the crappiest knives they have, and they could get one of these things. So let me tell you this. One, it doesn't matter how many knives they give you. Got it? Give me one knife. It's, it could be, I always tell them two or three, uh, but it could even be one knife. Uh, if you guys read all the way at the bottom, all right, it says note. Put a star next to where it says note, all the way on the bottom. All right? What does it say, Eddie? Note, this count is fixed regardless of how many knives they give you. You must get at least one knife from them. Everyone got that? Second thing, what does it say underneath that? You must not give both the first class special and the trade-in special. All right. So you can't do like a discount and give them scissors. You can't do $325 for free and yeah. give them scissors. Yeah. Okay. Or right. It's so. This is just a better deal. All right. So it's one or the other. So first you're showing them the regular first class special. If they didn't want that, they're like, oh, I don't know. Be like, well, hey, I'm always like, I'm not sure if you'd be interested in this, but I know a lot of my customers love it. They're like, have you ever heard of like trading in your car and getting credit for it? And they're like, oh, yeah. And so, Eddie, go ahead and read. Um, read. It says, well, we do have a special that I think you'll really like then. So the trade-in verbiage, basically. Go ahead and read okay. that out loud. So you like it, but you feel the, price is, uh, feel the price is too high. Or so you like it, but you already have knives that work well for now. Well, okay, Mrs. Kathy. Kathy. Yeah. We do have a special that I think you'll really like then. Here's how it works. It's kind of like when you go to a car dealer and you want to buy a car, but you already have a car that works. What they let you do, what they... What do they let you what do? What do they let you do with your car? Yeah, trade it in. You can actually do the same thing here for your knives. What you can do is trade in four to five year old knives and we gave a major discount to the side of Coco. So instead of... One thousand. Let's say uh, 1079, instead of ten seventy nine. Ten seventy nine. You can get the set today for only eight seven eight ninety seven, or you can pay the regular price and get a bunch of free stuff. Which sounds better? Jeez. All right. Um. Uh, that's it. All right. And guys, when you're when you're talking to the customer, the only thing that matters. All right. Mm -hmm. Everyone, look up. The only thing that matters is this is all you're telling the customer. Would you prefer with a homemaker? They could do one eighty off or regular price with three twenty five for free. If they want the galley, what are the two options for the galley? Valeria. Either 785 or Well, here's what you tell the customer. Hey, you could either get a discount and save 140 or you can pay regular price and get $250 of free stuff. All right? Chris, what's my what are my options with essentials? The savings of 117 or regular price. So how do you tell a customer? Hey, would you prefer to save 117 bucks, get a discount? Or do you rather pay regular price and get $185 for free? By the way, guys, you always want them to pick regular price with free stuff. It is always better for you and for them. Always. All right? Um, they're getting more for their money. And, you're, and I remember when I was doing I was like, oh, I don't want to get free stuff. I'll do the discount. Well, if you do the discount, guess what? Here's how we do the discount is we sell them the set, all right, without the table knives. And then we give them the table knives for free. Do you guys see that in each so one rather, when you write it up? We would rather do this than like have them get like either the shears or the kitchen. No, 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 no. You want to sell a regular first call special. So here's here's your steps. So now you guys have homemaker, all right, with a regular first call special. And if they don't get that, then oh, here's our trade. Trade in's lower, all okay, right. So. And then you have your regular galley, and if now you have your trade, and then you have your essential. It's an extra step. Those of you who go tomorrow, you're gonna have kitchen system trade in, so homemaker trade in, galley so it's always regular increases. With first call special, yeah, not and guys, I didn't I didn't say this before, but why do the top reps sell more? Because if you guys looked on here, there's some sets that you have no idea what the heck it is, but they start with a complete system. And if not, here's your complete set. And here's our signature system. And if not, here's your signature. And here's a kitchen system, or maybe the homemaker. So remember, in, in training, I said the average sale is made on the fourth or fifth attempt. So on their fourth or fifth attempt, they're not even at the homemaker. And you were like, homemaker, galley, starters, pieces, something. Mm -hmm. All right. So obviously, you're gonna sell less. Um, but the higher you start, the higher you land. So this is an extra step in there uh, to help you guys out. All right. So let, let's do a homemaker. Let's say someone says they want to do the homemaker set. 
Uh, they do the, I'm going to show you, we're going to write up a discount and we're going to write up, and just look up here, we're going to write up uh, a regular with 325 bucks for free, all right? So first, if I'm doing the $325 for free, so one, what's the item number for a Homemaker Plus 8, a regular Homemaker Plus 8? 28. All right, look at your price list. This tells you how to do the discount. The discount's different, all right? So what's the item number for a Homemaker Plus 8? Price list, kids. Uh, yeah. Omega Plus 8 is 2018. 2018. 2018. So 2018, and let's say whatever, we're doing it in white. So Homemaker Plus 8. And I picked to do 325 bucks for free. So I want to get the scissors for free, all right? I want to get a fishing knife for my husband. Fishing knife. I want that cheese knife. That thing looks amazing, all right? And they'll tell you how much am I at already, all right? So this is like 250 all right? So I still have like another $75 that I can get for free. So I'm going to do a, a vegetable peeler and an ice cream scoop. Okay? So I'm going to write all these up. And what am I going to do? X, X. X amount. All right? So what are all my points for these? What are the points for the scissors? Go through um, your book. So how many uh, points for the scissors to give it away? It's 70 <laughs> points to give it away. How many points is a fishing knife to give away? Um, Second page, bottom section. Second page, oh, bottom right. section. 60. 60. Mm -hmm. Cheese knife, the regular soft grip. 40, it's in the gadgets. 40. 40. 40. Ice cream scooper is 25. Vegetable peeler. Is, so you got right? Oh, 20. 20. All right. So, you guys know how to writing it up is the same thing. Line one, the they're paying 1079. Everything's written up. Now, the bottom part that has this to figure out what I'm getting paid yeah. off of. What's my net? What's my net CPO? What am I? Or excuse me, my CPO value? Everyone, look up here. You guys all know this goes here, right? Yeah. That's what they paid for. That's what I get paid off of. Would be ten thirty four. All right. So my CPO value. How many points did I give away for free? One hundred ninety two hundred and fifteen. What is ten thirty four minus two fifteen? A fourteen or what am I saying? Eight nineteen. Do you know what it is? Yeah. All right. Um, so eight nineteen. Cool. That's my that's my net CPO. Now let's do. The, let's say they pick the discount. Well, guys, if they pick the discount, check this out. And it's right here. It's right here for you. So everyone look at it. Okay. I'm gonna do quantity one. And what and how it's written up is we're selling them. What's a two thousand one? If you look at your price list, what's the 2001, Vaughn? That's if you have a homemaker set. It's the set. basic homemaker set. Do you guys see that on your price list? Yeah. 2001 is a basic homemaker set. So what we're selling them is a basic homemaker set with a big block. That's why it has B. All right? This is how I sold Max's complete set was with the trade-in special, by the way. He was going to sell a signature, and then I told him if they wanted to do the complete set, they could do the discount or get the free stuff. And they were like, oh, really? And they did that instead. And so you put B for big block. What does that mean? It has the spaces for the table knives. This is, this is me drawing. I'm not a very good artist, okay? <laughs> um, so this is the block, all right, that the knives come in. So you have all the knives here. And then they either have the table knife spots or they don't. don't. But the block costs the same exact amount, whether it has this or not. So what we're doing is we're selling them the basic homemaker, but we want the block that has the spaces. Cool? The next... So then I put the color, and I put trade-in homemaker, and the system will pull up the name of it, all right? Then the next thing, um, Adri, what am I charging them for next? Do you have this in front of you? Have this paper, please. 897. All right, so for the homemaker discount, how do I write it up? So I wrote them up for a basic homemaker, all right? What's the next thing I'm writing up, Adri? Um, 1759. One table knife. Can you point it out? I want to make sure 1759. I'm charging them for one table knife. Oh. And then, Adi, what am I giving them for free? So in order, so how the discount is done is that we just, we take off, we don't charge them for the table knife, like for all the table knives. I'm just charging them for one, and I'm giving them the other seven for free so they can put it on the block. Do you have to explain all this to the customer? No, you just say, would you like a $180 discount, or would you rather have blank free? This is just so you know how to write it up. All right, um, so that's how you would write that. Then, line one, what are they paying for? They're paying 897. That's what they're paying for. 
So when we do this, what would we have to do to get the CPO value? Well, I already put it here for you, all right? But how would we normally get the CPO value? Look it up. We would add what? The uh, I'm paying. What I'm paying for, I'm paying which for is less. this. What you get for free? Nice. Just this box. It would be this, and what else? And, the, and, the same same and this. So you would look at the CPO value for those two. So what's the CPO value, Chris, for a basic homemaker? 819. 819. What's the CPO value for one table knife? 31. So the CPO value for what I'm buying is 850. How many table knives did I give away for free? Seven. 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 So that's 147 points. So the CPO is 703. Do you rather have 819 or 703? 819. Free stuff will always be higher. Everyone got that? Always be higher. Who feels you could have sold some more sets if you guys had this this weekend? <laughs> yeah. right. um, for sure. All right. Found a new set of oh, man. I always trade those suckers in. So do me a favor. Write down the complete and the signature because it's not on there. Either write it on the top or write it on the back. All right. Complete. Here's your, your trade-ins for the complete and the signature. All right. Complete set. You can either pay regular price, which is 20 254 and they can get four hundred and fifty dollars of whatever they want for free all right or they can get a two hundred fifty dollar discount and the price comes out to nineteen sixty four all right so it comes out it's a little bit more three you want two hundred fifty dollars all right huh oh I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry that's not what it is sorry 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 1997. All right, so that's why it's a $250 discount. It's like actually like a $260 discount. All right, um, so it's, it's right there. So the price would be 1997 if they do the discount. If they do the discount, do they get free stuff? No. No, because no, how we did the discount is we used all the free points. So they can either pay regular price and pick out 450 bucks or whatever they want for free, or they can do the discount. All right, um, then guys, with the signature, the regular signature set, they can pay the regular price of $15.99 and they can get $400 of whatever they want for free, all right? Or they can do a $220 discount and the price would come out to $13.77, all right? $13.77. <coughs> so money, 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 money in your pockets. Do you guys like that? Sick. All right, uh, it's it's fantastic. So you guys use that. By the way, Joel Feliz, one of my guys, his first weekend. You know what he sold? A fishing knife. He left advanced training, sold three homemakers back to back with the trade-in special. Two with free stuff, one with a discount. So I know, and one of our other guys, Jose, we call him Trade-in Man. He left literally his first weekend. He sold like two pieces. Um, he had he had gone like one for three for two pieces. Left advanced training. And he went, it was like galley trade-in, homemaker trade-in, essentials trade-in, like trade-ins all week. He ended up selling $6,300 that week. And it was like all like trade, we called him trade-in man. It was so funny. I'm like, do you sell anything else besides trade-in? He's like, I love the trade-in. <laughs> I'm like, all right, use it. It's great, all right? So it's definitely beneficial. Everyone feel good? Yes, yes, all right? So that's all my sales stuff that I'm going over with you guys today. Um, so I want to do real quick, like three-minute, real quick, raise your hand. Um, debrief on what we covered. What are key phrases, key tips um, that you guys liked most that we went over so far today? Raise your hand, quick. Sure, All right, so trade in special. What? Use the ownership. Like tell me how it's already there. This is your piece. Okay, the next one, your set. So that phrase. Set. Same sets a lot. All right. Um, uh, hold. Go again. Three week trial. Three week trial. All right. Deposit program. Write down the pieces that you like. Yep. Write down the pieces, and then so when you're showing them the sets, you're pointing out the ones that they like. Mhm. Mm cool. Did you read it? Uh, anybody else? Key phrases or things you guys liked? All right. Tell them high quality stuff is always going to be sharpened. Yep. Um, uh, so making sure you guys are creating a problem with that. So perfect. So what we're going to do, I want to go into um, the next phase here. Uh, I want to go through how to maximize recommendations Absolutely. real quick. All right. Yeah, take one of those. We're going to go through recommendations, um, show you guys. Uh, basically, the first part was how to get more sales. Got it? Second part of today is how to get more appointments. Well, what's the number one way to get more appointments? Make more calls. All right, make more calls. All right. Number one way to make more sales. 
Two more appointments. <laughs> so if you want more sales, what do you want to do? More, more appointments. Calls. If you want more appointments, you want to make more calls, calls. calls. All right. So in order to make more calls, you want more people to call. All right. So it all connects to each other. So let's go through our maximize recommendations. So number one, first tip. What does it say? Page twenty-one. Must be perfect. All right. Chris came in here early this morning to work on stuff, and he was like. Yeah, just no one's giving me recommendations or whatever, and and I and I said that's probably because you weren't asking the right way. He's like, yeah, you're right. He's like, but when I followed it, I got I got a sponsor, and I was like, oh, he's like, yeah, it did work. <laughs> I was like, get it down. So he was just sitting there memorizing it, and he already passed his page 21. Um, uh, before you guys leave today, you need to say your page 21 so we can put pass or fail um, before you leave. Uh, but for some reason, you didn't have it down today. By Wednesday, you must no, pass your 21. Uh, all right? The, um, the three bullets. I get paid every time I show cut call. I want to hear the whole thing, but the leading in and leading out does not have to be word for word. Just the, I get paid every time I show cut call, and I can only call people I've been personally recommended to. So what I need you to do while I'm cleaning up is jot down two to 300 people who might be nice enough to help me out. I'm not necessarily looking for anyone that you think would buy, just anyone nice like you to take a look. Um, that's what you want to make sure is down word for word. Everyone got that? All right. So um, that must be perfect. I put there the rec sheet handbag. I love this. It's one of my favorite things. I taught this to Eddie. It was Eddie, the, the average person, I told you guys on day three, the average person will give you how many recommendations? What did I say on day three? Two to five. That's what the average person will give you. Two to five. Um, uh, the rest is up to you. And it's up to you to use the sponsor, to say the, the ask for Rex the right way, to use the sponsorship the right way, and then I love the Rex sheet handbag, all right? And so what I mean by that, no matter how many names someone writes down initially, whether they write one name, two names, five names, or they say, I don't have anyone, they're always thinking of people that would buy. Always, always thinking of people that they think would be interested or, you know, would like the products, all right? So... Whenever they, whatever they write down initially, no matter what the number is, whatever they write down initially, you know, you take it, right? They give it to you. Oh, okay, here you go. You know, that's that's what I got, or you know, that's how many, whatever they wrote down, they they, they they're done writing. Um, uh, I grab it. And I'm like, oh, thank you so much. I'm like, so you think that uh, these guys would be willing to take a look at it? You think these guys would like it? And they're like, oh yeah. I'm like, great. And then you hand it back. So this is the rec sheet hand back. You hand it back. So you say, oh, thank you so much. Perfect. And then I go, and I go. Now, who do you know who wouldn't buy Cutco, but they're just so nice, and they wouldn't mind helping out a college kid, you know, or they wouldn't mind doing a quick appointment, um, and so let him know that. So slide it back. Hey, now, who do you know who wouldn't buy, but they might not do, you know, they might not mind helping me out and do a quick appointment. I'm like, I get paid 15 bucks every time I do it, so anyone who's super nice, shot them down. And all you need is three more to get to that sponsorship, or all you need is, and showing them. And so I put here, Rec Binder, which I'm going to show you guys. Um, I don't know where Sarah Laws is. I'll get that. Uh, you want to have a rec finder set up, okay? Um, actually, Jonathan! And can, is it like soundproof in there? Can everyone like wave at him? Jonathan! Um, uh, <laughs> now, I have your rec finder, please, so I could show it to them. So you want to have a rec finder. And can you ask him if, if he knows where Sarah Law Jonathan, ask Randy if he knows where Sarah Law's rec finder is. Um, I'd like to have Sarah Law so I can show them. It's an advanced one. Um, so ask him. She was calling him earlier. They might be behind the desk. Check on the in the desk in here, um, in here, and then ask him. Um, so I'll, I'll show you guys this. So setting up your rec binder, I set his up with him. So uh, um, uh, as, as cheesy as this is, whatever it is, it says you know be my sponsor. I told him to make a nicer one. Um, but yeah, perfect. Um, but I put this as be my sponsor. Help me win scholarships. You know, and he has his Broward College folder. Um, we set this up so he has. And so hers is a little bit, hers is a little bit nicer. <laughs> um, uh, so hers has, you know, help me win scholarships, be a sponsor. Only takes ten names. You know, she has that on there, uh, and has a picture of herself. You can personalize, you can do however you want, but you want to have a rec finder set up because you want to show them everyone else does it. So she's like, oh yeah. So when you write down, you know, thirty names like so and so did. These are the ones she was just calling. Um, but this is when you write down thirty names like they did, you're a sponsor. And so she has. 
you know, this person gave her 30 names, this one gave her 14, this one gave her 30 names, this one gave her 23, uh, this one gave her over 30 names, 30 names. And they all fill out a page because everyone does it. Uh, and so it's just showing proof. That's why I told you to write all your moms onto yeah, one page. Um, yeah. Uh, and so all the ones, by the way, that your parents, that you brainstorm with them the first day for training, write them all down on one of these sheets. I always tell my guys to do that. That way you have one to point to, and then people see someone did it, and then more people will do it. They always do what everybody else has done. So she gets all these full pages because she has full pages. And she's like, oh, yeah. And I joke around with customers. I'm like, hey, um, I always always hand them two blank sheets. So biggest mistakes rookies make is you guys will hand. I, I did this when I was new. And some of you I saw did it. Some of you guys didn't. But I would always hand uh, a sheet that already had names to somebody else. And that's like number one rookie mistake. Never hand a sheet that has names on it to somebody else. Because what are you telling that person? To add more names. Versus if I give two blank papers, what am I telling them? Okay. Write down a crap ton of names, all right? So one says add some more names. One says give me a crap ton of names. Um, so psychologically, you're going to get more. And you can have fun with it. Like I always would hand two blank papers, and I joke around. I'm like, hey, if you get two sheets, you go into my favorite customer book. If you only get one, I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm like, write down as many as you can. I'm like, you can cheat, use your cell phone, use the address book, whatever like you want. I'm like, anyone who's super nice like you, all right? And you're like kind of flattering them. I'm like, yeah, anyone who's super nice like you. Someone says, oh, I don't know. I'm like, you're too nice not to have friends. I'm like, no. I'm like, who do you know that's nice from here? Who do you know that's nice from there? Um, but setting it up. So I set up, um, you know, we set up Jonathan's. So he has this one, boom, double sponsor. And one of these was his mom, and then another one was someone who gave him um, uh, those people, you know. But just showing them uh, that other people have done it. And obviously that's going to grow um, a lot more. But you've got to have your rec finder set up for success, all right? Um, so. <laughs> it's really pretty. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, this is all her stuff. Thank you. Um, so you want to have a rec finder set up. You want to have your sponsorship page set up so that you have, um, for you, Chris, your mom's signature might be here four times or five times because however many names you brainstorm with you. Uh, most of you guys, it'll be three. Some of you guys, it's two. But have that already on there. Anyone who was a sponsor, write their name on here. So you have names to point to. Um, also on the top of here, you can put every 10 names equals sponsor. You know, 50 sponsors equals $150 award. Those are things you can do. So when I say sponsorship page set up, it said it like says it so that they see it. And then it says rec sheets marked with, tar like with targeted marks, meaning like on um, 10, on 20, on 30, there's like marks on it, you know? And so maybe on 10, you put uh, a star, maybe on, or you just circle the 10. Maybe on 20, you put like arrow signs to it. On 30, you put stars on it, you know, but just something. So you're like, these are their targets. So they know what they're, so when they're at seven, you're like three more and you're a sponsor. I'm like, who do you know who's nice from work? Who do you know? I'm like, who do you know that works and eats? You know, and they joke around. I'm like, who do you know who wouldn't buy Cutco? But again, they're just so nice. And they might be willing to do a quick appointment. Jot them down. I but I don't want to waste your time. I'm like, no, totally cool. If they're nice like you, I'd love to see them. I'm like, even if they don't buy, they can introduce me to other nice people too. I'm like, and that helps me so much. And so really letting them know that. So that's all I'm going to say about Rex. First thing is get, get your 21 down. I don't want to hear you say I'm not getting recs if you don't even have your 21 because if you don't have it, you're not going to maximize the amount of recs you get. But know that no matter how many names they give you, always say thank you, <coughs> hand it back, and say who do you know that wouldn't buy but they're really nice and might be able to help me. You'll brainstorm a whole bunch of other people. The other day, Eddie had six, and then he passed it back um, uh, to the customer and did that, and he ended up with 32 names. All right? like, it, just, it makes a world of a difference. Um, and then make sure that you're set up for success. So by Wednesday, you should have this all set up. I'm going to check these when you guys get here on Wednesday for AT2 at 6 p.m., all right? So make sure that we have that ready to go. So I mentioned in training there's four gears uh, of people that you guys are going to see. Um, the first gear are people that you're very comfortable with, right? And that's in page 26 in your manual that you've been calling, saying, hey, I started this new job, part of my training, i got to do initial appointments, yada, yada, yada. Everyone good, all right? So that's gear number one. People that you're really comfortable with. Then there's gear number two. Gear number two um, uh, compiles two groups. It compiles people you know of, like you know of them or they know of you, like they know your name, they know. By the way, you could call your entire mom's cell phone. Every one of them. You could just grab her phone and literally call through her whole phone and say, hi, this is, and I'd say, this is Mickey and Armando's oldest daughter, Kathy. How are you? Oh, hi, honey. 
They'd all know who I am. I have no idea who I'm talking to, but they all know of me because my mom talks about me and they know she has four kids and they know that I'm Kathy, the oldest child. You guys with me? So that's, that's acquaintances. You could literally call your entire parent's address, book, your mom's cell phone, dad's cell phone, and just say that. And say, yeah, I'm so-and-so's son or I'm so-and-so's. Don't do it without their permission, but I'm just saying you could. And those are all people that know of you. Then there's the second part, people you haven't spoken to in a while. This is also known as, uh, is under the umbrella of the chicken list. All right, what's the chicken list? Everyone has a chicken list. It's people you could call, but you're too chicken to call them. All right, uh, and guys, let me tell you, those can be some of your best appointments. What do you think, what's the worst that could happen? They couldn't do the appointment. And by the way, do you think they're gonna hang up and be like, I can't believe Vaughn called us. Just graduated from college, you know, working with this company, get experience, you know, going to work on his <laughs> master's, had the nerve to call us and say he's working on a scholarship to help him during his master's? Oh my gosh. No, they're gonna be like, oh man, it's so good to hear that that, you know, like, oh, we're just, we, we're not gonna be able to, like, we got so much stuff going on. But they're gonna hang up like, wow, it's so great, you know, like, so good to hear from them. And so regardless, like, the worst thing that is they say no, and they're not gonna, like, hang up and be like, oh my God, I can't believe they called me, working hard towards something, you know, like, they're gonna be impressed with that, so know that. And guys, if you ever get a no, it's not against you. It's against the business proposition, separated. It. It's like if you worked at McDonald's and you're supposed to ask everyone, would you look to supersize your order? Or would you like an, to add an apple pie to that? And imagine if, if, if someone was asking and you said, oh no, I don't want an apple pie. And they were like, oh, like what? Like everyone I ask tells me no. Like they don't want to add apple pie. And like, I don't know if I could do this job. Like, I don't know if I could. Like, it's not against you. It's against, they didn't want apple pie, all right? Um, so keep that in mind when you guys are setting up appointments. So if you turn to page 34, that is for people, all right? And if you guys go there, these are people that you might, because if you haven't talked to them in a long time, you're not going to call them up and be like, hey, what's up? I started this new job as part of my journey. <laughs> like, you're not going to call them saying that, all right? So if you guys go to page 34, it says, so if I call my mom's, people from my mom's um, list, people I haven't talked to in years. My dad's like, call the carols from the church. Call them like that. I haven't seen them in five years. There's people I haven't seen in five years. And my dad's like, call them. They would love to see how you're doing, Kathleen. They watched you grow up, you know, from when you were freaking seven years old. I'm like, that's just weird, Dad, you know. And he's like, all right, well, if you don't call them, I'm not calling them. And and finally, I like got the guts to call them. And he's like, Kat, seriously, what's the worst that can happen? They don't do it. What's the best that can happen? It goes great. You get a lot of recommendations. Go see them. I'm like, all right. And I remember calling them, and I was like, oh, hey, Miss Carol. And like, I, I don't know if my name is Abel, but it's Mickey and Armando's oldest daughter, Kathy, from Wayside. And they were like, oh, my gosh, you know. And actually, the other day, one of our reps, um, Alexis, actually, Alexis recommended you. She actually went to the Carols for a demo, and they, I, they've known me since I was seven years old. She goes, do you know the Carols? She's like, they were telling me all about you. I'm like, oh, they saw me grow up. <laughs> they also saw me into trouble, get kicked out of school. Um, but I remember calling them, like, hey. And, and I remember, like, I didn't want to call. I got into some trouble when I was in high school, and I got kicked out. Um, and so I didn't want to um, see some people. I was kind of embarrassed. I was valedictorian in my senior class, captain of the basketball, head of the National Honor Society. And I just, I you know, hung out with the wrong people and just liked to party a lot and I got into some trouble. Um, but anyway, there's people that I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable calling, you know. Uh, but then finally I was like, all right, whatever. And I was like, hey, it's Kat. And they're like, oh my gosh, how are you? And my dad was joking with me. He's like, yeah, they call them. They're going to be so glad to hear you're not in jail. I'm like, oh, thanks, Dad. Uh, and he's like, let them know how you're doing. I was like, all right. Um, so um, it says their option. I don't think we've met, but I'm like, hey. It says, I was hoping you could help me out with something I'm doing. Personally, I like to say instead of I was hoping, uh, I like to say my mom thought you could, like blank thought you could, and then you say, uh, or excuse me, blank thought, and then you just say you could help me out with something I'm doing. So instead of I was hoping, I cross it out and I say blank thought. Because I just say whoever, you know, gave me the names. I'm like, oh yeah, my, my parents thought that you might be able to help me out with something I'm doing. Or oh, my Thea thought you might be able to help me out with something I'm doing. Or Julie, like my friend, because I call her parents. I'm like, oh, Julie thought you guys might be able to help me out with something I'm doing. Do you guys, I, I just think it's more personal. Yeah, that sounds better. Um, versus like, oh, I thought you could, and it's like, I haven't talked to you in five years. Instead, I'm like, oh, my parents thought you might be able to help me out with something. And they're like, oh, yeah, what's up? What's going on? I'm like, well, hey, do you have a quick second? I'm like, well, what I do is show a quick presentation to people I've been personally recommended to, like you, on a product called Cutco. You've probably heard of Cutco before. You may even have some already. Either way, it's a lot of fun. Best part is I get paid just to do the presentation, and there's no pressure to buy. And the more appointments I do, the better I chance to earn a scholarship. 
um, I want to do five appointments before Wednesday. So I wanted to know if I could stop by. And if you want for today, if you're not booked for today or tomorrow, say, I'm trying to get two more appointments for today to hit my goal. And I want to see if there's any way I could stop by at blank or blank. And then, hey, thanks so much. This really helps me out. You know, get to reach directions, read them back. Hey, write down my name um, uh, and write down, you know, my confirmation number, which is not on there. You guys can put their confirmation number. That's something that I do. Um, and a uh, smiley face you can recognize when I get there. All right. But, hey, it was great talking to you. I look forward to seeing you again, you know, whatever it is. So this is phase two, our people that you're connected to. Um, so uh, right now, um, as long as you guys are coming to phase one and phase two, now some of your recommendation sheets, I don't want you touching your recommendations unless they fit into phase one or phase two, which, by the way, I'd say like half of your recommendations right now, uh, maybe more, are in those phases because it's from people that you know. So you either know them and you didn't have their number or you know of them or they know of you. So you can totally call recommendations that you're connected to because those are acquaintances, all right? Phase three is if you have a church directory, a school directory, um, your neighborhood, you go on white pages and get the numbers of your neighborhood. You don't know them, they don't know you, they don't know you, but you live down the street or you go to the same church or you go to, we'll talk about that more on Wednesday, but that would be the next phase, all right? And you guys could also go just knock on doors at school if you guys are in your neighborhood. If you guys go on page 35, it tells you, um, uh, you know, scheduling appointments.